Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to the Cochrane's Q test. As always, if you find this video to be useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. The Cochrane's Q test is a non parametric test used for repeated measures. And we can think of repeated measures in two ways. In the case of the Cochrane's Q test, three or more measures over time or three or more experimental conditions. The Cochrane's Q test uses a dependent variable that's measured at the nominal level of measurement and more specifically dichotomous. So zero or one or yes or no, two mutually exclusive categories. So I'll provide an example for the two types of repeated measures I have here, the measures over time and the three or more experimental conditions. Keeping in mind that we only have a dichotomous dependent variable when we're talking about a Cochrane's Q test. So with the three or more measures over time, consider a situation where you're at a mental health treatment facility, you're conducting research, let's say you have 30 participants, and you're treating them for depression. You have a treatment that you believe alleviates depressive symptoms. So you deliver this treatment and you assess the participants immediately after the treatment's completed and you assess them with one question. And that question is, have depressive symptoms interfered with your functioning within the last seven days? So for this question, they can only answer yes or no. So either the symptoms of depression have interfered in functioning in the last seven days or they have not. They have those two possible choices. So they answer yes or no right after you deliver the treatment. Four weeks later, you bring them back in, you ask them the same question. And again, you get a response from each participant of either yes or no, and you do the same thing four weeks after that. So you have repeated measures over time. You have one measure right after the treatment's delivered, one four weeks later, and one eight weeks later in total. So each measure is spaced four weeks. For the other type, the three or more experimental conditions, consider the same setting, a mental health agency. Say you have 30 participants again, and this time you want to test a few different brief treatments and see how well they work with substance use. And let's say you're working with participants who are suffering from substance use disorders. And with these particular participants, you know that they tend to use substances every day. So you expose all 30 participants to the first treatment. Let's say that it's a psychoeducational training on coping skills. And 24 hours later, you assess them again with one question. Have you used substances within the last 24 hours? Again, they can respond yes or no. Then you expose them to another treatment, let's say a treatment that teaches them skills regarding developing healthy relationships. And then 24 hours later, you ask that same question. You collect those responses and deliver a third treatment, let's say group therapy. So here you have three experimental conditions, the coping skills, the building healthy relationships, and the group therapy. After each condition, you use the same assessment regarding the substance use. And again, you're just collecting yes responses or no responses. So we can think of the Cochrane's Q test as similar to a one-way repeated measures ANOVA, except you only have the dichotomous level of measurement available for the dependent variable. We could also think of this statistic as similar to a Friedman's ANOVA which is a non-parametric alternative to a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. The null hypothesis for the Cochrane's Q test is that the population proportions for each of the groups are equal. The alternative hypothesis is that the population proportions between at least two groups are not equal. So this leaves us in a similar situation as we see with a one-way repeated measures ANOVA or a Friedman's ANOVA, where we are 
supplied a probability value from the statistic, in this case the Cochrane's Q-test produces that p-value, and it may not be statistically significant or it may be statistically significant. In the case that it is less than 0 0.05, that's usually where we set the alpha in the social sciences, we would have statistical significance, but we would not know where the difference is. So using the example with the three or more experimental conditions, we have the coping skills, the building healthy relationships, and the group therapy. If we had a statistically significant finding there, we wouldn't know where that difference is in, the, in terms of those proportions. We know the proportions are not equal between at least two of those groups, but we don't know where that difference is. It could be between coping skills and relationships, coping skills and the group therapy, or between relationships and the group therapy. So to find out where the difference is, we need to conduct a post hoc test. And the case of Cochrane's Q test, you have two different options. You could use three more Cochrane's Q tests for pairwise comparisons, or you could use the McNamara test three times. The result is going to be the same. When you perform a post hoc test for Cochrane's Q, you do want to correct for the inflation of type 1 error. And we usually do that through a Bonferroni correction. So we're adjusting the alpha. In the case of social sciences, again, it's usually 0 0.05. So if we had, say, three groups, we would divide the alpha value by three, which is approximately 0 0.017. And that would be the new alpha value for those post hoc tests. So in order to have a statistically significant finding, the probability value would have to be lower than 0 0.017 on one or more of those post hoc tests. Now let's take a look at the elements of a Cochrane's Q test. So here you have one independent variable. This variable has three or more related groups. We refer to this as K related groups. This is a within subjects design. So the same participant is being measured three or more times. We have one dependent variable, and again it's dichotomous, which is a special case of the nominal level of measurement that only allows two mutually exclusive responses. For example, yes or no, or zero or one. Now taking a look at the assumptions for a Cochrane's Q test, we think of inferential statistics as requiring a number of assumptions, which they do, and we usually think of the non-parametric tests as being more flexible. They don't have the same level of restrictiveness when it comes to the assumptions. The Cochrane's Q test has a few assumptions. However, it is more flexible than, say, a one-way ANOVA. So for a Cochrane's Q test, the participants need to be randomly selected from the population of interest. The participants also need to be independent from one another. The number of participants that did not respond the same for all conditions, we'll call that n, should be greater than or equal to 4. And what I mean by did not respond the same for all conditions is these are participants that did not answer all yes or all no, or did not answer all zeros or all ones. So there's some variation in the responses. They have a mixture of zeros and ones. The number of participants that did not respond the same in all the measurements, that number needs to be greater or equal to four. Now, when we multiply that number, n, by the number of groups, which we refer to as k, so n multiplied by k, that value needs to be greater than or equal to 24. So if you had three groups and the number of participants in each of those groups that did not respond the same for all conditions was 5, n times k would only be 15, which would not be enough to meet this assumption for Cochrane's Q test. If you had 10 participants that did not respond the same for all conditions and you had three groups, that would be 30. 
and that would meet the assumption for this test. As I mentioned before, the assumptions for Cochrane's Q test are a little more flexible than for inferential statistics like the one-way repeated measures ANOVA. One of the common assumptions that can be problematic for many of the parametric statistics is the assumption of normality. And there is an assumption of normality for the one-way repeated measures ANOVA. For the Cochrane's Q test, there is no assumption of normality. I hope you found this introduction to the Cochrane's Q test to be helpful. Thanks for watching.